Dying is an inevitable law, something no one can escape. However, there are deaths that are surprisingly and frighteningly coincidental. The fates of those individuals seem to be entwined with a mission or the occurrence and conclusion of a certain task. In history, there are stories that are entirely true. However, there are also tales that have been passed down through folklore for quite some time. We neither affirm nor deny them. We simply present the statistics to provide you with a multifaceted perspective on the issue of unimaginable coincidences. If you're ready, let's begin. Today, we will take a look at deaths so coincidental that they seem unbelievable. Number 1. Even in death, still struck by lightning. Lieutenant Colonel Summerford was a British Army officer. In February 1918, while stationed in Flanders, Belgium, he was struck by lightning, leaving him paralyzed from the waist down. In 1924, after relocating to Vancouver, Canada, lightning struck him again, this time while he was near a riverbank. Two years later, he passed away, but that didn't mark the end of the eerie connection with lightning. Four years after his death, his grave was destroyed by a lightning strike. One wonders if he had incurred the wrath of the Thunder God. Number 2. The accidents unfolded just like in a horror novel. Edgar Allan Poe is a renowned 19th century horror novelist. One of his works, published in 1838, is titled The Narrative of Arthur Gordon Pym of Nantucket which caused a sensation due to its eerie resemblance to an accident that occurred in 1884. In his novel, Edgar Allan Poe wrote about the adventures of the young man Arthur Gordon Pym. He sneaked aboard a whaling ship named Grampus by stowing away. Unfortunately, the ship sank in a storm, leaving only four survivors adrift on a boat in extreme hunger and thirst. Eventually, Arthur and two others decided to kill the young boy named Richard Parker in order to use his flesh for survival. The incident occurred more than 40 years later when a large ship named Minionette was on a journey from Southampton, England, to Australia. The ship encountered a storm and sank in the southern part of the Great Southern Ocean. Only four people survived. Sailor Dudley, Mr. Edwin Stevens' wife, Edmund Brooks, and a young boy named Richard Parker. After 19 days adrift on the lifeboat with no food or water, Richard Parker drank seawater and fell into a coma. The remaining survivors made the decision to kill and consume him, arguing that he would die soon due to weakened health, and he had no family to care for him. This action raised significant ethical and legal questions and led to the famous R.V. Dudley and Stevens case. Number 3. Narrowly escaped death three times, each time rescued by the same monk. Joseph Mathis Ainer was a renowned Austrian painter of the 19th century. However, he had a highly negative disposition and consistently sought death. The first time, at the age of 18, he attempted suicide by hanging himself, but was timely rescued by a monk at the Capuchin Monastery appearing out of nowhere. The second time, at the age of 22, he again attempted hanging, and once more, he was saved by the same monk. Eight years later, Joseph was sentenced to death by hanging for his political activities against the ruling authorities of that time. Strangely, Thanks to the intervention of the Capuchin Savior, he was pardoned. However, ultimately, Joseph succeeded in ending his own life with a revolver at the age of 68, and the one who ushered him into eternity was none other than the Capuchin monk, whose name Joseph never knew until his death. Number 4. The horrifying disaster unfolded, just like a novel. Futility is a novella written by Morgan Robertson, first published in 1898. It was revised as The Wreck of the Titan in 1912. It features a fictional British Ocean liner named Titan that sinks in the North Atlantic Ocean after striking an iceberg. 
The Titan and its sinking are famous for similarities to the passenger ship RMS Titanic and its sinking 14 years later. Although the novel was written before the RMS Titanic was even conceptualized, there are some uncanny similarities between the fictional and real-life versions. Like the Titanic, the fictional ship sank after wrecking on an iceberg in April in the North Atlantic Ocean, and there were not enough lifeboats for all the passengers. The Titan would have survived ahead on collision with the iceberg, but a glancing encounter did more extensive damage. There are also similarities in size 800 feet long for the Titan versus 882 feet long for the Titanic, speed, and life-saving equipment. After the Titanic's sinking, some people credited Robertson with precognition and clairvoyance, which he denied. Scholars attribute the similarities to Robertson's extensive knowledge of shipbuilding and maritime trends. Number 5. The musician who feared the number 13 passed away on the 13th. The Austrian composer Arnold Schoenberg suffered from triskaidekaphobia, the fear of the number 13. He was born on September 13, 1874, and believed that his destiny was influenced by that date. The obsession was so intense that he once changed the title of his composition, Moses and Aaron, by removing one letter A from the word Aaron, because the original title had 13 letters. On his 76th birthday, an astrologer wrote Schoenberg a note warning him that the year was a critical one. 7 plus 6 equals 13. This stunned and depressed the composer, for up to that point, he had only been wary of multiples of 13 and never considered adding the digits of his age. He died on Friday, July 13, 1951, shortly before midnight. Schoenberg had stayed in bed all day, sick, anxious, and depressed. His wife Gertrude reported in a telegram to her sister-in-law Audley the next day that Arnold died at 11.45 p.m., 15 minutes before midnight. In a letter to Audley dated August 4, 1951, Gertrude explained, About a quarter to twelve I looked at the clock and said to myself, Another quarter of an hour, and then the worst is over. Then the doctor called me. Arnold's throat rattled twice. His heart gave a powerful beat, and that was the end. Number 6. Multiple generations in a family all died from lightning. In 1899, a man was killed by lightning when standing in the backyard of a house in Taranto, Italy. Thirty years later, his son also died for the same reason, and also in this position. Coincidentally, this tragedy that continued to happen to his nephew on October 8, 1949, was also in the same place. This terrible tragedy so far science cannot explain the cause. However, the story in Italy is not the only one. A family in the U.S. also became famous when four generations in a family are experiencing scenes of lightning. Allison's family in the United States must also encounter the same tragic situation. It all began in May 1899 when Chris Allison, 23, visited his wife and father-in-law. And after that, lightning suddenly hit the house, causing Chris to die while the other two were unharmed. Twenty years later, in 1921, the brother of Chris, all while checking cattle during a summer stormy night, was suddenly struck by lightning right in front of the farm gate. Allison's family has since been afraid of lightning. Chris's sister, Christine years later, always lived in fear of being visited any time. In 1941, Christine's grandson Bill came to visit her. At that evening, a storm struck. When they were walking through the living room, a bolt of lightning struck through the wall. Fortunately, no one was hurt. By 1966, Bill's cousin, Connie, was walking out on the street and was struck by lightning. Connie did not die, but only paralyzed a part of her body. A few years later, Bradley Hamble, 
Olison's fourth generation when visiting his grandmother in Burlington, Illinois was almost hit by lightning. Hamble was also the last person in the family to be asked by lightning. Many people after hearing this story said that this was just a coincidence, but the Olison family believed that their family members were able to attract lightning. It may be due to genetic factors or from some supernatural force. So, we have gone through some remarkably coincidental deaths that have been documented. Whether you perceive these events as purely random or believe that some mysterious force silently orchestrates them, these cases are indeed quite peculiar, aren't they? If you enjoy our content, please hit like, share, and subscribe for more interesting videos.